In this final introduction to Enroute video, I'm going to take a deeper look into creating output from Enroute. This is an important step at the end of each project, create output from the toolpath so that they can be cut on a machine. I'm going to use the same example file I used when demonstrating how to cut your first project, and I'm going to open the output dialog. An important step when creating output is selecting the correct machine driver. Each machine uses a slightly different language or output format to communicate the instructions to cut the toolpaths. So Enroute has to generate machine instructions into an intermediate format, and then those have to be interpreted by a driver into the correct format for your machine. That's why another common name for machine drivers is post processors. In the machine driver selection, I currently have a multicam machine loaded because that's the machine I've been using. But if I want to load a different machine, I can go down to the active drivers button, which opens a new window. And here I can see the list of all the drivers available, and I can choose from all the different manufacturers. Within each manufacturer, there can be different driver types, so you'll have to find the driver that works for your machine. If a driver for your machine doesn't exist, we can create a driver for your machine if you reach out to Enroute technical support. Once you have the driver selected, you can define several parameters for the driver, like the home position, and this is also where I will define my tool changer and the tools I have loaded in it. I can also define the drill bank here if I have one. I can set up the configuration and the type of drills. In the speed section, I can define the default speeds and also set a maximum if there's a maximum speed I don't want to exceed when generating toolpaths. The units are important and typically set when the driver is created. It isn't recommended to change these units unless you know what needs to be changed. If you need to send the file directly to the machine, you can define the communication parameters in the driver as well. The final section is for advanced parameters, and it isn't recommended that you change these unless you know that something specifically needs to be changed, and in route technical support can help with that. With my driver configured, I'm ready to configure my output file. In this parameter window, I can choose which toolpaths I want to output, like if I want to output all of the toolpaths or just the ones I have currently selected. In the priority section, I can change the priority of each aspect of the design. In this case, I have the tool order set as the highest priority, so all the toolpaths using tool number one will be cut first, and then all the toolpaths using tool number two will be cut afterwards. But if I wanted to complete all the toolpaths associated with a single object before moving on to the next object, I could change the priority order by grabbing the row header for object and dragging it to the first priority spot. This can be done with any of the items in this list. In the tool order section, it shows that I have two tools that I'm using. I can reorder the tools by clicking and dragging the row header of each tool. Once I have everything set the way I want it to, I can create the output file by clicking to file. I'm going to overwrite the example file I created earlier. A great way to visualize the output is by using backplot, which I can activate from the toolbar here. When I load the output file, I can see the tool paths that have been translated by the machine driver, and I can also read the G code that was created. For this machine that I'm using, the G-code is pretty clean. Some manufacturers use a modified G-code or a, a different implementation that's harder to read, but this is pretty straightforward. If I switch to step mode, I can step through each command and see it plotted out. Okay, that's strange. I can step through each command and see it plotted out. This is also a good way to check my ordering. As you can see, because I forgot to switch the end mill back to its second position, the outline cut out first. Normally, seeing this in backplot, I'd probably go back and switch it back, and then regenerate my output files. Another useful feature is that I can click on a section in the diagram, and it will jump to that segment in the code. Backplot is one more tool to help you understand what's going on with your design and to help you do one last check before sending it to the machine. Like I just proved, it would have saved me from cutting out my piece in the wrong order. That's how output files are created and that's the end of the introduction to Enroute video series. You can continue your learning by using the Enroute knowledge base or by watching the right-click videos for each of the tools. And of course, by continuing to design it in Enroute.